What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to Shopcast, episode 62. This week, we watched a movie called Censor. It just came out. It's available on Amazon Prime to rent for like $6.99. Uh, you can buy it as well, I believe. I think it's like right around $15. Bucks. Um, yeah, that was Josh's pick. I thought it was Chris's pick. So, Josh, <laughs> why don't you tell us what Censor's about? So, Censor takes place in the 80s in the UK during the video nasty era when uh, Margaret Thatcher was like the prime minister and and was ve- like super just censoring everything Ugh. um so it was like the age of like uh movie violent movies make people violent so right. <laughs> the main character is a film censor she watches these violent movies for a living and decides what to cut out of them and um she's got a weird past where her sister go went missing as a as when they were kids and it got sort of traumatized her and this this world that of of these horror movies sort of like merges into her past and you know it gets very trippy and weird that's yeah that's pretty much what it's about um without spoiling anything i figure we talk a few minutes i'm gonna go ahead and right now i'm just gonna say if you don't want to hear any spoilers about this movie you might want to just stop watching the 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 video because um in my opinion it's gonna be kind of hard to talk about it without spoiling things for sure so um yeah fair warning if you don't want to be spoiled i think this is gonna be one of the times where we have to spoil a new movie because of the what it is it's just kind of hard to talk about almost anything about it without spoiling something because it's a very meticulous and particular movie they did everything with a purpose as far as i can tell um yeah. so yeah fair warning <laughs> sorry guys give me yep looking that cold that chris has i have the same damn cold or i did <laughs> and now my sinuses are still killing me man <laughs> yep i can i can relate <laughs> oh sorry do what i, I said i can relate man <laughs> This is driving me absolutely nuts. You see, Rogan got COVID. Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, I saw that. Everybody's making fun of him, <laughs> dude. Yes, yeah, what he gets for not getting the damn vaccination. And then he went and did like fifteen different like fucking uh, probiotics, antibiotics, vitamin packs, fucking IV thing. Fucking, he went and dipped himself in some kind of river. I mean, he did everything. He fucking, <laughs> yeah. Put yeah. fucking elk piss on his head. I don't know what he did. <laughs> Probably. But, uh, Oh, by the way, this episode is brought to you by Knife Crime. Ah, that's awesome. Anyway. Um, oh, hey, my first uh, Patreon exclusive video dropped tonight. Thursday Thoughts vlog series once a week. Nice. Um, I saw that pop up on my phone. Yeah, more than likely, I'm going to probably sit in the room and listen to a record and just talk about what's going on because people wanted a vlog series, and that's what a vlog is. But I'm going to listen to a record while doing it. Um, this one just happened to be in my car because I just decided to do it one day. And I was like, if I don't do it, I won't do it. So I just fucking threw my GoPro up in the car and drove to the craft store to get some inks and stuff and decided like mid drive that this is going to be a Patreon video. And so that's <laughs> what it is. But uh, yeah, so if anybody's interested in that, that's how you check it out. But um, so, okay. I don't, I don't even know what to say about this movie, man. Like I, I, I pretty much... This is the first time in a long time that within 10 minutes of the movie, I was pretty sure I knew the outcome and that I was right. And I was like, huh, I was a little disappointed. I don't really care that much about that kind of stuff. But I noticed it because I'm usually not right about that kind of stuff. Usually I'm like, oh, this is definitely happening. And then by the end of the movie, I'm like, oh, I was way off. But, um, and it might just be because I watch a lot of movies like this or that have, you know, similar ideas anyways. They're not necessarily constructed the same way, but. Yeah, Josh, what do you think about this movie? Like, I, I don't, I don't really know how I feel about it. To be honest, I, I, it was, uh, I thought it was very acted very well at times and then very poorly at times. And I thought the cinematography was really nice at times. I thought some of it was really pretty, and then I also thought some of it was very bleak. But I, I did like the fact that they very much made you feel like this shit was in the eighties. Like the whole damn movie, it felt like a based on a true story type of movie, even though it wasn't. Because it had, like, a couple of real people that existed in real life, as in, like, people that they talked about, not necessarily showed, but like you said, Margaret Thatcher is, like, somebody that exists in that world. And, right. like, so it, it felt kind of like it was maybe based on a true story. Um, I feel like this one might have been a swing and a miss for me. 
but I don't know. Like, I, it's very perplexing because I, I, at the end of it, I was like, immediately, I was like, shit, I got to watch this again. I just don't know when I'm going to have time because mm-hmm. I don't think I really got to soak it all in. And I watched it in here by myself. It wasn't like I was, I just think it was, uh, it, it wasn't quite what I expected. I was expecting it to be a little different. Um, but I, I, I do, I do think I want to watch it again. I think I liked it enough for that. And I just want to like, I'm finding it more and more these days that a movie on a first watch, if I don't have any idea what it is, on a first watch, I almost never like it that much and I need to watch it again. And then it kind of grows on me because I'm pretty easy to please eventually. Once I get things in my head, <coughs> excuse me, I'm pretty easy to please. But yeah, man, what, what's your opinion on this one? How did you feel about it when it got over? Because yeah. I, I, had, I had a similar feeling right after I watched it. So I'm interested to hear what Chris says because okay, because it's very fresh. Like... Um, right, right off the bat, I wasn't sure how I felt about it. Like, I like the last twenty minutes is like pretty, pretty fun and cool and crazy and right. The, right. the rest of and the rest of it's pretty slow and like I wasn't really sure how how I felt about it. But I watched. I think I watched it on Tuesday night and it's kind of sat with me. And I've been thinking about it. And I watched a few videos about it and the more it's the more it. I've let it sit with me the more I've liked it um, and there's a lot of like small details and things that sort of parallel and um, things that I really liked um, so I think I yeah I think I I, I really like it and I, I definitely want to watch it again do you think you really liked it yeah huh. interesting yeah I I, re- I did not think you were gonna like it man I was watching it and I was like there's no way Josh likes this movie really <laughs> yeah, I didn't dude is- Ahead, yeah, it didn't it, yeah, it didn't really seem like like one that typically you would pick at least but i mean after watching it i'm i'm not really surprised to hear you say that so yeah. I mean, I, it I, is sure. a little it's a little bit of a slow burn <clears throat> um you know it's not the it's not you know a slasher movie with people getting chopped up and you know gore and all kinds of stuff like that but yeah the end does get like pretty crazy and cool and a little un- unexpected See, okay, so that's kind of what I thought. I, that's, I didn't like the end. I didn't like it at all. Like no. I didn't. It just felt very predictable. Like I was like, all right, that's what I thought was going to happen. Yay! Which is why I want to watch it again because I feel like maybe I missed some stuff in the middle that was like supposed to mislead me or something. Mm-hmm. But like immediately when she sees that chick in the video, I knew that that wasn't her sister. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And so I was I like, too. well, that's a well, that's a bummer. Like they shouldn't make it that obvious, and it, it it just was. It was so obvious the way they focused too much on the fact that she was so adamant about not wanting to give up finding her sister that that made it so obvious that that wasn't going to be her sister. Right. In, in yeah. my opinion, I think they should have had maybe had her pump the brakes on that a little bit, and maybe like when she goes to talk to her parents and her parents, if they had written it where her parents were like, "Well, we're thinking about." putting this to bed and moving on with it and then and then leaving the leaving the decision to her and then her turn around and say yeah i'm good with that and then that gives her parents the, the time to be like well okay well we're not 100 percent sure then and it makes it a lot more well shit i don't know what's going on man because whenever their parents are like no we're done with this and she's like no and like oh well, that's gonna then she's gonna end up thinking she knows the answer and not be the answer because that's how this stuff's written mm-hmm. it would have been crazier yeah. if that would have been her sister and it'd been like oh shit that came out of nowhere um yeah, or was, if it had been her sister and her sister was like no i want to be like this i don't want to go back home like but even yeah, that was, would have been kind of predictable yeah i was going to reference the same scene when she goes to talk to her parents it pretty much like sealed it that yeah she's she's completely way off on thinking it's her sister yeah, yeah. it's like i there's there, there was a lot to like about the movie there's a lot to like about it I think that that's where I've kind of landed, but I'm not I'm not set in stone on this yet. I I, I don't want to just be like, oh, fuck the system, because that's just how my brain normally works. If somebody says they like something that I wasn't on the that was on the fence about, I naturally want to go the other way. I don't know that I don't like it yet, <laughs> but I didn't even want to say that I was close to not like it because I because I don't know that I, I feel that way yet. There's a lot to like about the movie, and I think that. I wouldn't have a problem owning it because I don't think it's going to be some crazy expensive movie to buy. Um, I think the filmmakers are capable. 
there's a lot of pretty shit in the movie like visually it had a lot of cool looking stuff there's a lot of stuff where i think they were probably try trying to go for an italian look where they kind of like maybe mm -hmm. overdid it a little bit um, the reds yeah which i like so i'm not too mad and they might have overdid it on purpose who knows <clears throat> but uh yeah i mean a lot of that is in the last like 25 minutes yeah yeah where sure. if, if you notice I don't, like there's this there's that one shot where it like zooms into the static on the tv and yeah. then after that the the screen slowly like closes in yeah i yeah. like cool stuff like that it's just like the story is where i don't like the movie like everything yeah that's i think that's, that's what it is is the story really wasn't my my jam but everything that, else about it i really did quite enjoy i love was, how she put the tape in and it showed it from the top of a vcr with the top off yeah and it should go in and pull the lid up pull this pull the tape out i like stuff like that i was like this is cool looking but like i just really wasn't captivated by the story a whole lot but i but i want to give it another go yeah i think the story is a little bit thin yeah but overall i really like it it reminded me of two things um it kind of reminded me of the babadook a little bit really yeah i mean not in the the scares but in the like subject matter the the way that she's like depressed and dealing with like a trauma Huh. You wow. I, mean? I, don't, I don't know how you got there. Because that, that movie is all about, like, dealing with grief. Yeah. That movie scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I think that's a better uh, better uh, movie uh, than this. But uh, the <laughs> other one, I, I thought this I thought this had a lot of similarity to St. Maud, too. Dude, okay. Yeah. I almost said that. I almost said that is the first thing I thought when it was over with. Literally, yeah. the credits rolled, and I thought, huh, that reminds me of St. Maud a lot. I just yeah. thought I was wrong. No, no, yeah. I got the same vibe. I did. It's a girl did that's like slowly, like sort of, like going deeper and deeper into her insanity. Okay, sort of, well, you know. if that's the case, then I'd rather just rewatch Saint Maud. <clears throat> I thought it was a much better movie. But see, I'm on the opposite side. I think I would rather I, watch this. Did, did you I watch Saint Maud? What? Yeah, I did. You yeah. did? I yeah, I wasn't. A, I wasn't a huge fan. I like. I liked. I appreciated it, but I didn't like it that much. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked it only because of the end, though. The, it, the whole movie was like pretty mediocre till the end, and it yeah. wrapped it up so well that I thought it was a, it made it a better movie. But yeah, I, I can understand why you wouldn't. Have. It's definitely not a great movie to to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's a well made I, movie, but it's, but it's not like it would make for an interesting double feature and comparison video, like to like watch watch them. It would be a kind of a painstaking double feature to sit through and watch. But like, it would make sense that they would go together, and you could like come back, take notes and really talk especially if it was a group setting where you could really go back and forth with the movies um yeah. it'd be kind of a cool cool idea i, I didn't hate the movie at all i, I just i was kind of perplexed i just didn't know because i don't recall thinking about that movie much so like i just sat down to watch it and was like okay i don't really know a whole lot about this Boop, play and i watched the trailer first because i was trying to get krista to watch it she was like nope not interested at all she didn't even want to watch it at all <laughs> and she's pretty easy to convince at this point to watch a movie with me and she was not at all interested um so when i watched it i might have been just kind of like irritated about that because i wanted to watch it with her so mm. i don't know man I, I, I there's a million different things that go into watching a movie or listening to a record or whatever going into your job for the day that make it a good or bad or neutral experience and i think this one just kind of had a funky path to, for me or something i don't think it was a bad movie but I think the longer I resonate on it, and it, it, this is becoming a very common thing with me that I watch a movie, I'm like, eh, I can take it or leave it. And then the longer I think about it, I'm like, okay, never mind. This one gets compartmentalized with this stuff over here. And this is one of these mood movies. When I'm in this mood, I'll pick from this stack. When I'm in this mood, I'll pick from this stack. And I really think that that's just the way that my brain and my hobby is going now to where I just, now things go into a, compartment of what am i feeling that day and that's how i pick my movie sure yeah that i mean that's I, I mean i think all of us do that to some extent like i've, I've never even thought about stuff like that until pretty recently yeah if i'm not if i'm in the wrong mood i'm you know if i'm in a bad mood i'm probably just gonna pick a silly comedy or something just to right myself you're like i'm in a terrible mood i'm gonna go watch the godfather <laughs> yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah you gotta you gotta recognize what kind of mood you're in because like, something something really slow is just gonna you know like i'm having a horrible day let's watch the exorcist you're like what <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense to me guy right yeah for sure
Yeah. Well, but if you're having a bad day at work, you might get on the might want to go watch Falling Down or. Um, what was that? Watch Russell, that movie every day, sir. What was that sure. Russell Crowe movie not too long ago where he like tortures Unhinged. that? Ch- yes. You mean Falling Down too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might cheer you up after a bad day at work. Bro, I love Russell Crowe, and Fat Russell Crowe is my favorite. <laughs> I still need yeah. to watch that. Dude, it's so good. Bad. You're gonna. Yeah, it, it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's a good time. It's not the greatest movie, but 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 it was fun. No, it's definitely definitely not. But it's uh, <laughs> Matt Riddle. <laughs> Anyways, um, what'd you think, Chris? Yeah, uh, yeah, I I liked it. I, I was a little lukewarm on it, kind of through it, and had that kind of similar thought that Randy had at the beginning, like ah, I kind of see where this is going. Mm-hmm. But you know, as it started unraveling, mm-hmm. it was a little different than than what i was expecting but i liked the end i thought the end was was pretty good you know i again not that shocking of an ending yeah. you know leading up to that that final thing of her or i'll just say what it is of her like Only chasing dude, yeah, chasing down the sister and then like, just please please i was like yeah i was like you thirsty dusty bitch all right conor mcgregor yeah and then just her it just cutting to her in this like weird little happy sequence it was like oh yeah i mean she just either really abdu- abducted her or is just living some you know crazy un- not real yeah she, lost, or she something. lost her damn mind well the, like the last 20 minutes of the movie are i think a complete fantasy see i, I that i was wondering i wasn't sure about that but it seemed to me like this was like a story of a girl that had like a mental illness man because yeah. she couldn't move on like it, yeah. life is about loss and grief and how we how we deal with that and personally i've had to deal with so much of that in my life on many different levels that i've gotten to where i'm pretty good at it even like it's not something that i like being good at necessarily but i mean between the loss of houses you know businesses friends, family, I've dealt with so much of it. At this point, when somebody passes or I hear of a tragic, I don't know, somebody losing their home, it just doesn't affect me the same way. I never even met my grandparents. So like some of my friends have lost grandparents in the past. It just didn't affect me. So like when I'm watching this, I'm just thinking like, golly, you're a sad sack, dude. Like get over it, bro. Like you got, how long ago was that? Now I've never dealt with somebody just up and disappearing. I think that's a whole different bag. So I don't really have the right to judge necessarily other than the fact that it's fiction. But like, um, I did find that a little stressful. Like, I just was like, yo, like you Mm -hmm. really need to like try to utilize your time to be happy. You've only got one amount of it. And I think that's a part of that's because I'm 40 now almost. And I'm hitting this point in my life to where like, I want every day to be useful and I want to do something positive every day, something creative every day. I mean, y'all have probably seen it, dude. In the past two years, I've gone from doing a lot of chilling and a lot of watching movies to where like I'm efficient with my time, man. I get a lot of stuff done now. And my and I've gotten a good system with making videos. I don't go and do 20 a day. I make a couple a day. I go make something else. I do this or that. I hang out with my kids for a little while. I hang out with Chris for a little while. I get to work. I go to bed. I wake up and do it again. I like doing it. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I've accomplished something. And so I think part of me was just looking at it from my vantage point of a 40 year old man in a midlife crisis, essentially from instead of a, I mean, that's really what's happening right now. It just kind of was an epiphany I had a week ago, man. It just, I started cracking up and I was like, oh my God, is this what this is? I was like, this is fucking insane, dude. Like, cause I've been having like crazy, it's a whole nother conversation. But uh, this young lady, she's like what in her mid twenties or something? Or was she older than that? Eh, maybe maybe 30 maybe younger 30. 30s so she's at, like at, you know she's most. not quite midlife yet she's dealing with the loss of a sister that was you know when she was like what 10 or 12 years old so it's only half of her life not it's not like it happened when she was four it happened when she was a young young teenager maybe yeah i think her yeah, sister I'm, was seven right and she was like 12 or so she was like they were, she was the older one wasn't she yeah something yeah. like that yeah so like so you know she's 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 dealing with something that's quite a bit more fresh than say my dad when i lost him when i was 16 well, I'm, that's 24 years now. And, uh, so it's, it's a different, it's a different wound, man. And so I just, yeah. 
anyways, yeah, I, I overspec, I overthink this shit, man. I just, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. I mean, it, it's a story about mental illness for sure. And I think looking back on it, I think her job was her like way of coping with it. It was like her way of controlling her situation, you know? I definitely was yeah. like, interesting path of career you chose or interesting <laughs> yeah. career path you chose. For sure. Because, I mean, there's definitely, you know, a theme of censorship and whether that's a good thing or not, um, which is a little <clears throat> abstract because of how it ends. But, um, yeah, really, like, the trigger that, like, really, like, sends her spiraling is when, you know, that, that, that stuff in the news happens. And... And the, the guy like the guy like eat, eat kills his uh, family and like eats his wife's face or something like that. Oh, that's right. And it was like something that happened in one of the movies that she censored, and they're like, and then it turned out. For it, it turned out he hadn't even watched the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and and that's like definitely saying like this is censorship is is bullshit because it has nothing to do with it. Yeah. I will say that at one point, something that I really appreciated because this needs to be on record and on a movie somewhere or in a movie or other uh is that in the audio it wasn't somebody you saw it was somebody talking on it sounded like it might have been like a pre-recorded thing or something and this guy said uh well violence is in the world how do we prepare ourselves for it if we don't or we need an outlet for it is what he said is we, we need an outlet for all this violence in the world it's real so you mm -hmm. can't censor it we need an outlet and i thought that was so well said and accurate because we do man I literally made this shirt because of stuff like that. Like it, 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 the reason I came up with this name is because of stuff like, it's not necessarily my outlet, but it's an awareness. Like, yeah, dude, this happens. Like, I don't even know if you guys understand why I called it this. Like there's a, we'll, we'll talk about it later, but like it, it's because of something that came out of real life, like something that happened. And I was like, whoa. And then and, and in retrospect, I was like, man, I'd, be, I'd make kind of a cool band name. And then I was like, or an apparel name. So I just kind of went with it. Right. And, uh, I think that was a really important statement in the movie that there's a lot yeah. of this stuff in the world, a lot of darkness. And if we don't, it's just like when they censor, like, uh, like when Disney goes back and takes something out of a movie and you're like, yo, first off, that's literally history you're messing with, dude. But how do we learn from these mistakes if we don't have reference? Mm -hmm. If we yeah. didn't make the mistake anymore because it no longer exists, then we have to repeat it. So there yeah. we go. Thanks for making us go through this again. No, dude, leave it as it is. Let us learn from it. And honestly, it's just a movie, man. Like, yeah. people take this stuff so seriously. Well, the thing I was thinking about is the big, biggest thing probably in our generation was, like, violent video games. Like, Grand Theft Auto and stuff. They were always saying, like... Yeah, See, I was around a little longer than that. I, would, I remember when, I remember when uh, like, metal music was, like, about five years before video games. They were blaming everything on Marilyn Manson. Yeah, I yeah, distinctly that too. remember that. Because yeah. I, I was like... I had friends that were very affected by that. Like I was never a Manson kid, but all the other metalheads in my school were my friends because there wasn't any more punk rock kids. And so I remember a lot of my friends like coming to school like, dude, in tears because their parents took all their fucking gear, all their shirts and all their CDs and just took them and wouldn't give them back. And some of them threw them away, man. My mom threw away a bunch of my stuff. She took my white zombie CD. I didn't, I mean, I didn't really care a lot about it, but like it sure bummed me out to know that something I worked for got just taken because she didn't like the title of it. And, yeah. you know, it, looking back on it, I was only like 15. And when my kids are 15, it, what I say goes in my house. I'm sorry. You don't have the right to tell me what goes on in my house. So in hindsight, I'm like, OK, I get it. But like back then, that shit hurt my feelings, man. In reality, she could have just taken it from me and given it back to me when I was an adult. That's what I would do to the to my monsters. Is I would just, you know, I don't really want you having this right now. You're not old enough. And when you're old enough, you can have it back kind of thing. But yeah. You know. But this was set at the same around the same time as the original Nancy Reagan, like D Snyder parental Correct. advisory. Yeah. Yeah. And thing. the two life crew thing. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's actually what I was thinking of at first. And I was like, no, nah, I wasn't around for that. Or I was around, but I wasn't old enough yet. Yeah. And I wouldn't then, either. And I was like, I was like, the first thing I remember was, was the metal stuff getting blamed for like violence in school and stuff. Yeah. Combine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh dude. And Columbine happened. I was in ninth grade or 10th grade. And I, I remember that because a lot of my friends just that's how they dressed and so they got a lot of stuff changed dude like overnight man you went from being able to just dress kind of however you wanted to like there was a list of shit at the window now at every entrance like you can't have this 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 dude they got so bad they weren't allowing people to wear combat boots i had friends that that's the only fucking shoes they had 
And then six or seven <laughs> people came to school with brand new Converse on the next day because they were like, well, shit, man. <laughs> the only things I had was my boots. They were like, no combat boots. No, they said no fatigue pants. And that included like black, gray, olive green, and camouflage. They said basically cargo pants back then. Yeah. Cargo pants really weren't a thing back in the early 90s. But like, uh, not quite. They were getting there, but not really. They were like, no fatigues, no combat boots, no, no, uh, no dusters. They said they stopped letting us wear hats. They couldn't do like, I mean, you couldn't wear a hat in the classroom anyways, but like they stopped letting us like basically bring them. Like you'd wear your hat and take it off on the way into school. And then when you got off school, psh, throw it back on. Um, man, so many things just out of nowhere, dude. I, I, I forget yeah. about that stuff until we start talking about it. And it's kind of amazing how something, I mean, it's not amazing at all what happened. That's tragic. But like, it's amazing how one horrible activity by two kids in a place that's hundreds and hundreds of miles from us can be so earth shattering that it affects a high school in Houston, Texas. Like it's just, it's yeah. insane, man. Like, I mean, it should, I'm just, but it's like, it's just so crazy. It's crazy how they blame it on music. And you're like, yo, when, when do we take responsibility? Like that's one of the things that I have a problem with in our society as a whole right now is nobody wants to take responsibility for something that they did or said and everybody wants to hold double standards it, it it's hard to even be alive right now man it stresses me out just talking to people because it's like well look we're going to be accepting of you as long as you think like we do but if you don't think like we do we're no longer accepting but we're not going to admit that we're accepting. and we're going to act as though we still are <laughs> and then within the same breath they're like also my kid just stabbed somebody, but it wasn't my fault. It's because he was listening to his music. It's like, what are you talking about? No, dude. My kids can listen to devil music right now, and they would know that it, it was ridiculous, and they shouldn't stab people because, <laughs> well, I teach them to not stab people. <laughs> I'm a little worried yeah. about Charlie sometimes, but I'm pretty sure Brickin's got it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Silliness. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're going through a major like censorship you know thing in our world right now it's yes. crazy how much like the 80s is paralleling yourself yeah i i, I uh re-watched v for vendetta vendetta the other day uh, oh uh, that's a good movie which really like like the government creates a virus it's like part <laughs> of the plot and i was like holy crap this is weird um, but that was, you know, that was written in the 80s by Alan Moore during the Margaret Thatcher years. It's all about censorship and like where it could go in the future. It's like, well, so crazy. I, I think that they need to make some laws. And this is a whole nother subject. But I think they need to make some laws that prohibit social media platforms. Like once you reach a certain level and you've got a certain amount of users, like, I mean, I would say it had to be even as low a number as a million. Once you have a million people that you could influence by making changes, you shouldn't be allowed to just deplatform somebody without a fucking good reason. Because even people that I don't agree with, like when they deplatform Donald Trump, dude, I can't stand that guy. I think he's dangerous, but I also believe in free speech and I believe in free freedoms. I believe in you have, I don't think it's okay for a, 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 a platform like Twitter. And I understand that it's their company and their business. But at what point do we owe society, everybody an equal shake? I think it's kind of fucked up because you're literally taking somebody's liberties away from them because free speech is affected by social media right now. Like social media is our, how we talk. And so yeah. it's just the same to me as walking up to him and slapping a piece of duct tape on his mouth and going, hey, you can't say that. Look, I don't agree with it. I don't like what he said all the time. He should be allowed to say it, man. That's fucked. It's just like somebody that's, that's racist. You should be allowed to be racist. I don't have to support you or your business, but you should be allowed to have your feelings and your beliefs. It's up to you, man. You want to be a piece of shit? You'll have to deal with those consequences, but you should be allowed to be that piece of shit. It's just <laughs> yeah. not fair. I mean, it's just not fair. It's not fair at all. You shouldn't be forced to marry somebody because you're a preacher. You shouldn't be forced to hire somebody because of affirmative action. It's crazy. It's no longer, there's no longer, you don't have to meet any criteria anymore. Or, or the criteria shifted to where it's no longer something that you've earned. It's just like, did you get the lottery ticket of being a fucking this person? And if you did, you get to have this job now because they have to hire you for whatever, for whatever it is. I mean, you know, and the crazy thing is, is it's a whole, it's a whole thing. But yes, the censorship is, it's all connected. It's, and that's why I can go off on a rant like that because it's all connected. Mm -hmm. I was talking about censorship and went to fucking employment, dude, because it's all <laughs> scary because it all is from the same general like idea. And it's, it's very scary, man. Like, 
Yeah. Well, you have a th if you have a thought that's different, we well, better keep your mouth shut. People, you know, I have to think like that a lot. I'm sure you do too, Josh. Just talking about movies, you can't even have an opinion about something if the movie you're talking about has an opinion and you don't get up there and go, "Hey, look, look, I denounced this. It's just a movie." You're 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 liable to get canceled for nothing. And mm -hmm. all you did was say like, "Oh, it was directed really well. The cinematography was great. The music was awesome." Uh, as far as everything else, I don't really care. I just want to watch the camera work and listen to the score. Well, you didn't say that this guy had a, you know, opinion that was bad, so you're canceled now. It's like, well, no, that's not what the video was about. It was about the cinematography and the score. And they're like, well, that doesn't matter. It's crazy, dude. Like, scary. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Have you had to refilm any of your audio yet? Because I definitely have. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I 100% I have had to, like, redo audio because I was like, because uh, I'm just joking around most of the time and people take things so serious that like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I probably shouldn't say that. Just out of, just out of respect. I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not scared of anything. I'm just a respectful guy. So I'm like, uh, that's, that didn't, that, that's not going to get taken right. They're going to take it out of context and not understand what I meant. Let me just redo that. Just out of, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, man. First and foremost, yeah. if I change something, it's not because I'm scared of getting canceled. It's out of respect. But it is a nice thing that I do know that I well now I don't have to worry about getting canceled because man, people can't take jokes. Dude, comedy is like becoming like uh, liquor in the twenties, bro. It's like you gotta fucking go talk to your friends all quiet. Hey, you want to hear a funny joke? Well, don't tell nobody else this shit because we might all get arrested. You know, the public public opinion is is a powerful thing. And, and gang, uh, what do they call it? Uh, when you gang up on people and and do it publicly, it's 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 everywhere, and it's uh that's what that guy tried to yeah. do to me today to me on Instagram. Tried to get everybody to gang up on me. It didn't work, thank goodness. But crazy man, crazy. Yeah, one of the one of the videos I was watching of yours earlier, you literally cut some audio out of it because. I mean, you said you had said something, and you're like, I, eh, yes. I don't want that in there. And then literally, like, two minutes later, you said some other stuff that I was like, ugh. It was hilarious, but I was like, what, ooh, that's going to be What, did I, what did I say on the second time? <laughs> I don't care, dude. Don't it, was, it was a, what looked like a gay man that okay. was dressed very gay. And okay. it was, As they do? It was kind of funny, but... uh. Yeah, just the way you described it was hilarious. Oh, you probably look like a gay dude. Um, yeah. I love gay people, so I don't care. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, uh, no, I got no problem I'll, either. Just look. Since since we're talking about he, this, I can I can tell you basically what I said was I referred to somebody of Latin descent as somebody that really enjoyed tacos, and I felt bad immediately. <laughs> immediately, I was like, I was like, oh no, I was just kidding, but I, I shouldn't have said that. Even like though it's very accurate, Latin people love tacos. So do I, and I'm white. But whatever, yeah. you can't say it about a Mexican dude because then you're an asshole. Yeah, tacos are amazing. And they really are. <laughs> so are Mexicans. But, and I have uh, no problem know. with that other guy either. But dude, how you weird be is able that to... even saying so are Mexicans? I was like, Ugh. like they are yeah. Mexican. What are what else do you call them? Yeah, but like, you got to be able to laugh Latinx. at stuff. Latinx. Dude, <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness, I got I got barked at for calling somebody a black guy the other day. Literally, it happened in right in person. I was like, no, nah, it's that black dude over there. And he goes, African-American. And I was like, he's not. And the guy was like, what? And I was like, you don't want to have this argument with me right now. And I just turned <laughs> and I walked away. I was like, dude, he's just a black guy. I'm just a white guy. And you're just a, I think he might have been another white guy even. And I was like, what the fuck do you care? I don't think that guy was going to get upset about what I said. Why are you upset about it, you fucking dork? But, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, you know what? My, my favorite instance of censorship is I actually have a favorite instance is when I found out about Joe Rogan's company that censors people because he's such a proponent for free speech that I couldn't believe it when I found out that he has a company that goes and finds people's videos that speak negative about them and they get them blocked. I was like, what? You fucking wiener. <laughs> I, I love Joe Rogan, but like, I thought, man, uh, you know what that does though is that, that humanizes that guy because he's kind of like a otherworldly character you know it yeah. makes him seem more realistic that he's like okay he doesn't like that either you know because it does suck when people talk about you yeah of course yeah i could i could see him caring about that i didn't think he would at all until i saw that and i was like what and i looked into it and i was like wow that's real and i was like that's that's pretty crazy man but uh, you hear about errol hawani and brendan schaub just go dude they're in like a yeah blood feud now 
You know, I mean, and Rogan too. That involves Rogan. Sorry. Do what? And it involves Rogan too. A little bit, yeah. Errol Hawani has yeah. gone off the deep end, bro. Once he got off at of ESPN, he was like, "Fuck all you hoes." Yeah, yeah. I don't know that much about it, but I mean, Ariel always seemed like a just straight up kind of guy. I mean, he did scoop a lot of things and seemed to piss off Dana. And I'm oh, dude, Dana, Dana hates what, that guy. What got him blackballed? But I don't see anything wrong that he did. No, dude. <sighs> Brendan Schaub's gossiping and it got back to Ariel and Ariel doesn't appreciate it, nor should he. Yeah. Brendan Schaub is a tool. <laughs> but uh and I hope he sees this. Fuck him. That guy's a douchebag. <laughs> Dude, Brendan Schaub is like one of the only people that was ever a fighter in real life that I wouldn't be intimidated by. <laughs> Dude, that guy's so dumb. He's so bad at life. I can't stand. I'll give him this, man. That guy hustles, dude. He's not all bad. He's got some good qualities. He knows how to work his ass off. But like Everything about that guy irks me, dude. Thick boys, come on, bro. Thick boys, like, dude, oh. shut up. Yeah, you mean lazy boys? Like, that's what you. You're a sofa, bro. Shut the fuck up. Fucking stand. Yeah. And the stand-up's really bad. It. Well, I wasn't even gonna go there because I, I, <laughs> I didn't like that video of that guy. Uh, that that's all he did was talk shit about people's stand-up. I thought that was pretty lowbrow because he just went and made. He just made like tons of videos about people's, and he just talked shit about everybody. I was like, bro, like. I don't talk shit about everybody. I talk shit about very few people, actually. I just, Brendan Schaub, I wanted to like that guy, and I really used to kind of like him, but his head got big, man. Once, as soon as he started becoming, like, pseudo-successful, he started thinking his shit don't stink, and I just, I don't like, I hope I don't ever get like that, man, for any reason. I, Well, you can't tell the future, man. I, I'm not a perfect person, so I assume I would never act that way, but, you know, if something happened tomorrow and I popped off, got two million fucking subscribers, there's no telling what might happen to my attitude. I definitely flip people off more often. But, um, oh, yeah. so today let's 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 create this movie. I got a funny story, and okay. I got a, I got actually two funny things that y'all are gonna well once you, yeah you'll laugh at it. It's pretty funny. But anyway, so 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 censor. What's what's the overall feeling on this movie? I I think I think Josh is gonna grade it a lot higher than I was expecting. But that's kind of cool though. I really thought you weren't gonna like it. I'm glad you did. Um, I'm flip-flopping between like seven, five and eight. That's about where I thought you'd land somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll go eight. Okay. I, th I think I really, really like it. And I think I'm going to watch it again. I'll, I'll okay. definitely buy it when it comes out. Chris. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking not quite an eight. So I was actually going to go seven, five. See, I was going actually higher than y'all probably thought I was going to go based on what I said, but I was thinking seven because it was pretty enough to where I'd watch it again just based on that because I did think it was visually done very well. Um, and I do think there's a lot of room for improvement for me. So I'm going to go seven, seven out of 10 because there's a lot of stuff that they could do to a movie like that to make it just bad and they didn't do it. So there was a lot of things that I didn't even touch on that were positives. Yeah. So I thought the acting was pretty serviceable. I, I didn't I didn't recall any music stuff or audio stuff that irked me because a lot of times in a movie, it'll look really it had, good. Yeah, it, it had some good music good. in it. Sorry, it had some good music in it, and it had some some cool like horror movie references in the beginning too, like Driller Killer and yes, like, no, no, things. that was cool. See, there's stuff like that that I'll forget about, dude. Y'all keep noticing that I keep looking up like this because I'm used to my camera being up here, dude. It's mm -hmm. driving me nuts. I'm like, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, man, seven out of ten. I thought it was a. The more we're talking about it, the more I want to rewatch it later. I got a list of these movies that I wanted to just get back into rewatch. You know. I want to rewatch Midsummer soon. I, I I haven't watched it since the time I finished it and really enjoyed it. And I want to get into a mood where I want to rewatch it. And I keep I'm having to like ignore Green Knight talk because it's everywhere right now. And I don't want to just dump on that movie. I don't know that I'm going to buy that one, man. I don't think I'm going to, man. I've been tossing them back and forth. Like, am I going to because Chris I liked and I might get a copy for Carissa, but. I don't think I'm gonna add one to my collection, man. I've been, I've been, I really like what A24 does as far as like they really clearly care about their movies. They love what they do, and I, I think that they should be supported for that, whether I like the movies or not. And but I, but I did support it. I went and saw the movie, took my wife. So I, I feel like I did my part in supporting them on this one. But uh, I like that steel book. It looks cool. Like I don't know why, it just looked good to me. It's not a steelbook. Uh, the oh, picture, is it not a steelbook? It looked like a steelbook, the picture I they, saw. They do like a curved uh, slip cover on some of the A24 oh, movies. Oh, is that what that was? It looked like a steelbook to me. So, yeah. it, yes, yeah. that. That's that's yeah. what I'm talking about. I like that slip cover, it, though. 
It, yeah, it does look really good. So, but um, yeah, that everybody's talking about that movie right now, and I'm just like, man, it, I wish they would just say, yeah, I liked it, and not it's the greatest fucking movie of the year. I'm hearing so many people are telling me it's the best <laughs> movie of the year so far. I'm like, well, I don't really want to discuss it because you're just gonna get mad at me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna refrain from from, from that. <laughs> I'm 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 kind of interested in what our top ten of the year is gonna look like because we got a couple more months to go, and there's some movies coming out still that I can't wait to see. And there's also movies that I thought would be on my top ten that really aren't gonna be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. There's so much good stuff coming out. Uh, Dude, Halloween over. Kills and Terrifier Two are the ones right now that I'm like, okay, where are these gonna land on my top ten? Yeah. I can't imagine either of them don't make it. And I don't know that Terrifier is going to be number one. I don't know that Halloween's going to be in the top five. I have no idea. Halloween looks like it's going to be awesome. But I, I, so. I don't, nothing surprises me anymore. When you get a movie that looks great and you watch it, and you're like, ugh. I can't wait for October because we got that. We got Halloween. We got Dune. We got. Uh, I think I'm going to watch Dune, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it just looks badass, man. I, I can't ignore it. It looks cool, man. I, it. Not really. My, Brickin's even interested in it because it reminds me of Star Wars a little bit, and I think that's cool. So if he wants to watch it, it's not rated R, is it? I don't think so. Uh, it might be. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> well, if it is, I won't take him. But if it's not, I might take him to go see it. Um, Carissa definitely wants to watch it. So like, yeah. I'm. I'm. I, and really, the cast, dude. If the cast was much different, I might not care as much. But dude, I really like everybody that's in that movie, yeah. man. It's got a really good cast, and I it fuck does. with Josh Brolin. That's my dog right there. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. got so many good people in it. Um, I mean, only it's half of the story, so they're supposed to be doing a second one. Really? So yeah. I'm kind of scared that it's not going to do that well, and they never get around to doing the second part. So, I was considering. I was not considering. I was wondering about how big of a project that was, and what is it going to get in return. Because yeah. it looks like a mighty big... It's expensive. Yes. It's very expensive. Yes. Yeah, and it's on going to be on HBO Max. So That's what scares me. It's no, like, not charging extra like Disney does, which Oof. I hate that they do that, but still, it's not going to get them any extra money. And it's coming out at the, end of the same time. The box office isn't going to be great. I really so. like the HBO Max thing, and I'm glad they're doing it for their fans. But I think they should put like a two, three, or four week wait list on stuff like that. Yes. They will. They will. Even they like a, gonna... even like a four week one, I'm pretty okay with. Man, like <laughs> let it come out and get a few weeks in the box office. Let it get because I, I I I'll pay to go watch it in the theater just because, especially if we get to go together. Like that's a bigger deal. But like, yeah, man, that's a that's a bold move. Yeah, I'm not watching that on my TV first. I'm going no, to I can't. The theater for even, that. Dude, even, I mean, even I'm with you on that one. I, 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 I gotta see that on the, on the big screen. And I've heard a lot of people say that, but that's like movie fans, like the casual people, the ones that like accumulate to the big box office numbers. They're just gonna watch it at home. Yeah, you know? probably and yes. And it's not gonna, yeah. I don't know. I know the director was really mad about that. He was fighting to get it off of there, but. Yep doesn't look like it's gonna happen so no <laughs> uh yeah i'm worried about it but yeah it looks awesome so i'm really excited i'm it going does. opening weekend to see it absolutely <clears throat> so man have either of y'all watched candy man mm -mm, not yet yeah did y'all watch my review yeah 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 i commented on it <laughs> that's right yeah, no, I definitely thought you hated it. <laughs> yeah, I thought so that too. Click <laughs> Dude, hey, it worked. It's got like five times more views than all my other videos. Dude. I'm sure it does. <laughs> hey, not good. Well, I mean, the, I did address my title though because I, I put the title in there because it I had mentioned it in the video. If I wouldn't have mentioned it at all, I wouldn't have put that in the title. But I, I, I was like making the video and I went back and changed the title because I was like, that's better. And then I changed the thumbnail. <laughs> Dude, two people I'm, commented and they didn't even watch the video. They were like, fucking blah, 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 blah. And I was like, did you watch it? And they were like, no. And I'm like, then you don't know what you're talking about because I didn't say I didn't like the movie. You acted as though I said I hated it. And I didn't say that. I was like, you're the kind of person that I made this title for because you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> but uh, I almost didn't watch it because I thought I was going to be a rant. I was like, I should probably just watch it for myself first <laughs> before, <laughs> before I watch him like tear it a new asshole. <laughs> yeah, no. I wanted, I did, I did film it twice though, because the first one, I did kind of go off on it. 
Yeah. And then once I got it out of my system, I realized that I didn't want to do that. I was like, no, that's not really what I want to do because I did enjoy the movie as an overall. Did you enjoy it, yes or no? I have to say yes, I did. I liked it. Um, is there many, many problems with it? I think so as a fan of the franchise, but would I watch it again? Yeah. Fucking Candyman, dude. Who doesn't like Candyman? Assholes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, mean, I want to see it. Uh, the, yeah. Dude, I'll, I'll tell you what, the biggest problem to me had nothing to do with any of the, like, that kind of stuff. And I'm not going to tell you what the biggest problem was, because I'll tell you when you watch it. When y'all watch it, I'll tell you what my problem was. It's You're going to laugh and go, yeah, me too. I guarantee it. <laughs> you're going to have the same same opinion. But, um, so did y'all watch anything else this week? Because I watched a movie that y'all are going to be like, oh, shit. I did not. didn't watch anything. Uh, not during, no, not really. No. I'm pretty tired and busy. I watched Existence. Oh. <laughs> awesome <laughs> that movie fucking rules dude <laughs> it is the worst awesome movie i've ever seen it's and I love every second of it. it's so weird i mean they're literally licking buttholes in that movie dude basically basically dude, i literally it's... sat up and was like did that just happen and crystal was like yep they licked the butthole i've been waiting for you to watch this because i wanted to talk about it Bro, so... movie is amazing dude is that on blu-ray somewhere no, it, there's oh, only I wish a DVD. It was. <laughs> Bro, that movie was awesome. I want to. I tell you what was weird about it was that Jude Law is usually like a really uh, charismatic, confident person, and he's like a 24 year old, meek, shy, insecure guy in this movie. And you're like, huh, yeah. this is weird. It just. But he did a good job, man. He's a he's a great actor. I lo- I love Jude Law. Yeah, so, he, he uh, is really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude, uh, that movie was wild, bro. I, the whole time I was watching it, I was like, what in the shit? Dude, Cronenberg's so so weird, but... I had forgotten I mean, it was Cronenberg until we started watching it, and it said Cronenberg on there, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> dude, I watched a movie today that has a connection to Houston, Texas. It was uh, produced by Jim McInvale. Anybody that doesn't know who Jim McAvill is, if you're from Houston, he's Mattress Mac. He owns okay. Gallery oh, Furniture. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he owns yeah. Gallery Furniture. He's a uh, he's an asshole, but you know he's very wealthy. Um, yeah, it's a movie called Sidekicks. <laughs> Have y'all ever seen this? Uh-huh. You remember uh, Never Ending <laughs> Story two? No. No. Um, <laughs> there's a kid in it. That's he's, it's this movie about this kid, and Chuck Norris is like his hero. It very much is like if you took Last Action Hero and then Karate Kid and Ninja Turtles and something else and mix it all together, you'd get this movie. It's this kid who's he's like a daydreamer and he and he and he keeps daydreaming about Chuck Norris him being Chuck Norris' sidekick in all these movies. And it's like he has to do this like therapy stuff and then he ends up going to karate classes to get it out of his system. And then there's a guy that looks exactly like the bad guy in Karate Kid. He does exactly the same things. He talks just like him. He's got black geese on. It's 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 Karate Kid. It's even like an old Asian guy teaching him karate. I mean, it's so blatant. Um, but it was produced by Mattress Mac, bro. Strange. <laughs> oh, dude. All I could think about this whole time was, was Josh Ellis. I was like, I wonder if he's seen this. Because it's right up his alley, dude. He likes all that surf ninjas and all that shit so oh, uh yeah. <laughs> all those early mid 90s family action movies that are terrible and fun to watch <laughs> hmm. yeah. i watched uh what else did i watch this week i watched a lot of documentaries this week i listened to them but uh so y'all yeah, neither of y'all got to got around to watching much else huh i Nothing. started watching let me see i watched i watched peewee's big adventure with three children Hell yeah. I guess yeah. I did kind of watch something. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> I love that shit. Pee Wee Herman. I started watching this. What have is that? Ever, have you ever seen this before? It's a it's like an 80s horror comedy. It's got it's called Sundown the Vampire in Retreat. It was at Walmart. It's one of those Vestron video. Dude, I need releases. that in my life. Bro, yeah, I saw it, it just come out. Twelve dollars at, at Walmart. Yo, I'm gonna go buy that tomorrow. Uh it's got uh David Carradine, he's a vampire. I love David Carradine and uh, Bruce Campbell. He's a yes, vampire. what? Bruce, he's a vampire <laughs> hunter, and it's a like a horror comedy. I started oh, watching oh, it last oh. night, but I got tired, so I turned it off. But it was it's super what? it's super silly. Like sundown, what now? Sundown, the vampire in retreat. It's a weird title, but I think it's right up your alley. It's eighties horror cheese. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. I need this. I'm going to go to Walmart and try to find me one tomorrow. Yeah, there was a whole stack of them at Walmart. So <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, yeah, I don't see it on Amazon. They usually are when they're restaurants, whatever. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't think I watched anything else that I sat down and really watched. I was doing a lot of uh, printing and stuff this week. Man, I really hope that people understand. Dude, my mom got me so good, bro. So I was talking to my mom on the phone about the shirts, and she's like, so how are you selling them? And I told her how I was selling them, and she's like, oh, okay, because, you know, it's going to be very limited because it's all all done by me. And so I, uh, I'm i going to put them on Etsy, too. I have a bunch of one-offs like that button down I just showed y'all. I have stuff like that that I'm going to put on Etsy. And my mom was like, so how much do they cost? And I said, I was going to do like 28 bucks plus shipping. And then I just decided to scrap the shipping, make it $30 and add, you know, free shipping. It's a better value. It sounds better. It's just, it's just a better, better deal. And my mom, without even missing a beat, she's like, you didn't make it $31. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> so I changed it. <laughs> uh, of course. And, uh, no, but, um, yeah, I really hope the people that, that are interested in this stuff understand like what I went through to get this stuff done, man, bro. Like I, uh, first off I ordered all this stuff and it got stolen off my damn porch. I had to reorder it all. And then when I got it all, I, I guess I bought like, well, I don't guess. I know I bought like a, a cheaper emulsion, photo emulsion liquid. And I guess I got maybe a bad batch or something. Cause it's a highly recommended. It's just not expensive. So I, I went and made two screens and then they didn't work out right. And so I had to like go back, find some more liquid stuff that I had. Do you know what photo emulsion is? Never no, used it, but I heard really. it. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a two part liquid that you mix together. It turns it from blue to green. Once it's green, it's ready to use. You lay it on your screen and you squeeze it across on the front and the back, and then you let it dry. It's photos It's light sensitive, like very light sensitive. And when you, when you get when it's dry, you take your screen, your uh, design on a transparency page. And you put it face down on the backside with a piece of glass, and then you hit it with a. I, got, I bought a 500 watt light bulb, and you just hit it with a light for like 10 minutes, and it basically burns the screen, and it puts the the image is protected by the black, and so the light doesn't get to it, and it is it washes off, and it leaves the negative image, and uh, I guess the emulsion liquid I got didn't work out, so I had to go buy a emulsion remover because this stuff's permanent, dude. It doesn't come off. Like it's it's made to last, so you can screen over and over and over. I've already made like 30 shirts, so like, um, well, 30 items. I didn't. I made like two, three pairs of shorts, a, a couple of hoodies, and a bunch of shirts. But um, yeah, man, I went through a lot, dude. I was outside in the heat a lot. I was outside all day, two or three days in a row in the garage. Um, yeah, dude, it's something I'm pretty proud of. I, 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 I don't think this stuff is going to ever end up on Teespring. I think I'll, I'll probably always have this stuff done by me because it's a more personal product at that point. It warrants the price tag. Even though I don't think $31 shipped is a very high price. I, I buy shirts at that price point all the time. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm really proud of it, dude. This is getting, getting to be a full-time thing, man. Like, I just now I wake up and I've got... A schedule now it's kind of cool man it's it's pretty fun that's great but, uh chris it's your week to pick a movie out what you got for us did you find anything a minute ago or no got a phone i think we're all gonna like oh shit escape beauty from new beast. york <laughs> beauty and the beast say escape from new york escape from new york fuck yeah been a, <laughs> what about been a escape while? From la let's do that one la why i, I was <laughs> definitely kidding <laughs> um, yeah, no, I got that that Carpenter set. And it's the only one I haven't rewatched, so it's been a while since I've watched it. Dude, that movie's. Have you? Oh man, yes, dude. This is uh, this should be fun. Yeah. Down, 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 down. Dude, <laughs> such a good score. <laughs> it is. I love Kurt Russell so much that I think he might be on my top five actors list. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's. That's, just everything can argue he with does, that. I, I like I like the older and grumpier he gets, the more I like him. Also, yeah. Jeff Bridges is in that same category to me. Like the older he gets, the more I'm like, yeah, I like that grumpy old bastard. Yep, <laughs> I agree. I yep. definitely agree. Sweet. Yeah, yep. you got any plans this weekend, guys? Uh, no. Tori might be working all or like in school all weekend. Yeah, fun. I got, 
Yeah. I gotta make a post and postpone shop. Uh, I almost said shopcast. Uh, postpone the live stream till Sunday, because I'm gonna go. I get to go hang out with the offspring, bro. What? Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, awesome. dude. Uh, I, I never really call in the whole brothers of DJ thing. It just oh, kind of yeah. came up when I was talking to him on the phone. He was like, hey, man, I saw you made some shirts. I'm sorry to get back to you. Those are badass, dude. When did you start doing that? I was like, ah, just this week, man. We're just kind of chopping it up. And I said, what do you got going on right now? He's like, ah, I'm just prepping for BuzzFest. And I was like, oh, cool. Who's who's playing this year? And he tells me, he's like, he's like, actually, uh, the Offspring's headlining. He's like, dude, I got a, a, a VIP pass that I was going to give to a buddy. You want it instead? And I was like, I absolutely do. So <laughs> what up, dude? He cool. sent me a photo. He's like, I'll bring it out tomorrow. I was like, hell yeah. So I'm That's really dope. excited, man. Dude, fifth row, uh, fifth row with VIP, and I get to go hang out. Chevelle is playing. I don't really care about them much, but I don't even have to go till I want to go. I can just go whenever. I got the pass in my hand. I can just, it's a wristband and a ticket, so I can just go. I'm going to go work half the day and then just go from there to the Woodlands, and I might even go stop and see my mom afterwards because she lives pretty close to there. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Cody and Cameron is going to be there the next day, so I kind of wanted to go up to – the oh. woodlands this weekend <laughs> dude i wouldn't mind seeing coheed play i, I i've kind of like i don't like love the band or anything but i definitely appreciate them more than i used to they're really good live i mean they well they, i've they heard that a great. lot actually i've heard that yeah. a lot and i've watched one or two of their live videos and liked it um i've gotten to, i've gotten to like it a little bit just listening to you talk about it and knowing that you like it a lot it makes me want to at least give it a more uh uninhibited chance to listen to it whereas yeah. sometimes you'll hear a band and you know you're not gonna like them but your friends don't like them either, so you're like, "Fuck it, let's do it." You're like that's trash. Um, yeah, Thrice yeah. is the one that I'm waiting. On. I'm waiting on the Thrice album and the, and the Spirit Box album. I want to hear the whole album. Yep, I want both. Of I those. never listened <laughs> to the other Spirit Box song. I didn't want to say anything negative about it. You told me I might not like it. I took your word for it. Yeah, that one's a little more new metally, and yeah, you know, singing, screaming. Well, so. I'm gonna do a whole album reaction once I get the album anyway. So I mean, it's it's all good. I but I I have decided that my goal is to just be positive with my channel. And just like we've been going that direction for so long now that like it's just I really kind of feel good doing it. I had fun being kind of a snarky shithead the first few videos <laughs> I was making, but the fun didn't last. Like it was super. What's the word? Like it just had like a super fat. It's I don't know. It just didn't. It was fun for a yeah. little bit, and then it was very quickly like just nah. I'd rather make something. I'd rather make people smile, and yeah. you know, it sounds exhausting. So. Always have to bark back at people and yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, it, it is exhausting. I just, I just got tired of having to defend myself for jokes. As I'm like, bro, you guys are taking it too seriously. And then, uh, and then also the, the feedback was so nice when I did something like the first time I said to somebody like, if you want to talk to somebody, come holler at me. I didn't do it for any other reason than I meant it, and so like the feedback I got was overwhelming and it was like, it kind of touched me. I was like, wow, this is crazy. People really need somebody to talk to. And then I've gotten the most amazing feedback. Dude, my post for the 15 K thing, I've never had a post get that many likes and comments. And it got so many that even Instagram reached out and was like, Hey, this is an abnormally good post of yours. Do you want to promote it? And I was like, well, you're just trying to get money out of me. No, but like it's, <laughs> But like that, that's it. That's pretty cool that they caught wind of it being that big of a post for me. You know, it got like a hundred likes in the first hour. I've never had a post do that. Like I get 50 likes fairly often. A hundred's a lot, man. I only have 5,000 followers on Instagram. It's not like I have a ton, you know I mean? Not compared to other things that I'm doing. So, and my TikTok videos are starting to really, <laughs> I'm starting to do like stitches where I make videos with, with uh, other people. Did you guys see the one I had with uh, Riff Raff? Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. He's like, I just want to get a bunch of money and act like I don't know nobody. And then I had oh, a, yeah. just had me sitting in the chair. Do you really want to hurt? <laughs> Bro, I come up with these stupid ass ideas at like 3.46 in the morning. And that's when this shit happens. That's, yeah. that's when they seem like the best ideas. <laughs> yeah. And then the next day I'm like, why did I do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you put that one on Instagram, so I saw that one. Oh, did I? I don't even remember what I do. I, dude, <laughs> you would tell me I'm putting on Instagram. I'm just taking your word for it, bro. I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> all right, man. Well, thank you to everybody that watched this video, man. I appreciate it. Um, I think this one's going to end up on Horror 31 as well because it's a horror-related movie or ho a horror movie. Um, I got Horror Hangout coming with Stephen Fersheed again pretty soon. 
I've got hopefully Chris lined up pretty soon and I uh, reached out to a couple of actors. I'm not going to say who they are because they, they may not come to fruition, so it wouldn't matter anyways. But uh, so hopefully I got some good stuff lined up. Uh, maybe me and Josh can do another one. I, I know Andy's down. So I got people that want to jump on now. It's just turning into a fun thing. And it's a little different than Shopcast. Uh, not really, but a little bit. Um, I think it is because the two people thing makes it a lot different. Having yeah. three people makes it a very specific kind of video. We all have to be pretty patient when we're, when we're <laughs> you know. Yeah. But uh, awesome. Thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate it, man. 15K one step further in the right direction man this shit is awesome but uh take care of yourselves be kind to everyone else or fuck off <laughs> or look at big weird penis pictures on instagram dms that i send you when you talk shit it's up to you however you want to do this see you next time peace <laughs>